I want to get your thoughts on the 24 hour light cycle. Now we have so many folks out there that they want to get, you know, grow plants faster, get a better result. So they're putting their indoor plants on 24 hours of light and zero hours of darkness. Now the nighttime when, uh, you know, lights are off, that's when sugar transportation happens. So my question for you is, does it happen less with that 24 hour light cycle, therefore negatively impacting plant growth at all? Yeah, so so we have to remember that um, there's a wide range of plants and plant expression, right? And so um, there are some plants that are going to grow really well in the land of the midnight sun, right? Um, and they're going to have mechanisms that allow them to just keep going and growing. Uh, but we're also we also have respiration. Plants respire, and they only do that when they're resting. And so my instinct is that you'll get different things. Like we're going to get different relationships of microbes and different different like uh, terpenes and different medicinal qualities from both these methods. I want to see side-by-sides on full workups on like the parts per million, on the phenolics, the terpenes, all those things uh, to really – to really say and you're going to probably have differences in expression in in terms of like where the plants from so let's say you're growing a a, you know a certain plant from like the himalayas right those are going to behave very differently from like the same family from africa right Uh, and those genes do exist in strains right and so What I've seen in practice with people doing indoor grows from them flushing things to like the artificial light cycles, um, they're all trying to imitate or uh, shortcut nature. Why do we do light depth? We do light depth because we're trying to imitate the end of the season when there's less light. And so if we take that as as the guiding principle you got to do what's most natural. And like that's the principles behind this. I literally asked, what's most natural? How did nature originally do this? Um, and, and, and whenever we see amazing plants, um, and we're obviously talking about a specific amazing plant, um, there's abilities of these plants that kind of blow our minds. But what's best for the plant and what creates the best product is really the question the plant can do crazy things like for instance canadian growers when i talked to you know joy beckerman you know joy no uh she's the reason that the fiber cousin of the plant we're talking about is legal she was the lawyer who fought the federal government sponsored by you know john rulax nativa so that they could do that those foods um, she had me talking to Canadian growers and they 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 figured out that there's no ceiling on nitrogen. So they're raising the synthetic nitrogen higher and higher and the plants are getting bigger and bigger. And because they don't care about the seed, they only care about the fiber, they're like, well, no one's going to eat it. Let's go. And so it doesn't matter if it's high in nitrate. It didn't matter that it's like inedible. It didn't matter that it never left vegetative state and went didn't go to reproductive and didn't form seeds. So they're just like, throwing it on there and the soil is a desert they're destroying the soil so the whole narrative around like well the soil will be saved by this plant no 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 not the way they're doing it not industrial industrial growers in canada and they're modeling for americans and so so we have to recognize that there are aspects where you can abuse the system but is that good because it's like, yeah, you get two years where it's like, phenomenal, and then your soil's dead, and then they have to rotate it. And then they go to this thing, which is so depressing. And this is most of the Pacific Northwest, is most of Canada. It's like, well, we'll come back in three years and farm it like abusively again, and then we won't be able to do it for another three years, but then we'll do it again. And so they leave it fallow, and they let it, let it go, and they show back up, and then they get use it again and then they like leave it for three years meanwhile they could be farming that patch of land every year and having the soil improve their products improve and their bottom line improve so 
so that's really like a lot of what I'm doing is getting people to recognize the holistics involved and to be able to see and, and understand the longevity of their operation. Because yeah, there, there, there's, there's plenty of things that we could do that could stretch it this way or that way or, or push things, you know, but asking what's most natural has a holistic effect. You know, if we're not burning our soil, you could amend and then use that soil again. Or you could treat and then ferment and use that soil again. Like a bunch of things you could do. Um, you could even dump them all in the backyard, amend it, tarp it, ferment it, and then use it all again. You know, there's a bunch of things that people can do uh, that they're not doing. So so that's that's really my instinct when I hear like that, like, can we go all the way? It's like, you know, plants are pretty amazing. They're wanting to survive. And like, we can do like these hoops and make them do these weird things. Like, I mean, they have plants now like imitating plastic leaves. You know, and they're like, the plant can see. And it's like, yeah, the plant can see because it's trying to survive. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we're, we're torturing things to see how far they can go. We're like, we're doing all this stuff. And instead of saying like, what would be best? for the plant and letting that speak to us and looking at what that actually looks like. Because when a plant's super healthy, it's gonna actually invest in the next generation. So when a plant's super healthy, partnering with mycorrhizal fungi, it actually leaves the hyphal, uh, the hyphal expression of the fungi around the cell. So you'll have like this lipid rich hyphae that's just sitting there. And that's what becomes the inoculant when that root dies for next year. So that when a new root touches it, it inoculates the new root. What happens in hard times is the plant actually reabsorbs that and it eats the lipids as energy because lipids are like the best form of energy, the longest lasting form of energy. We know it's fats, right? So it's an investment in the mycorrhizal fungi that they can liquidate in times of stress or they can pass on to their children next year because who's gonna be growing in the soil of their root zone? Most likely their seeds, their children. So plants, when they have enough, are gonna do things that are gonna enrich the soil, gonna have secession and, 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 and regenerative qualities so that it goes, happens the next year, the microbes are preserved for next year and passed on. They're gonna do things that we can't do or we don't want to spend the money, you know, and the time doing, and they're just going to do it for us. So, so, so I, that, that when I hear that and I think about that, that's really what I see is like what we should shift to. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here, or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.